Party of Five. I hope you had a lovely Easter holiday. So literature is going to look a little differently to what it did before Easter. So I'm going to be here to help you through um, a typical talk for writing unit of work, very similar to what we've been doing in literacy in school. So it should all be uh, really familiar to you. So this will be your first lesson of um, the summer term. So today we're going to introduce a model text um, and you're going to do a bit of background work around that and thinking about the language and things like that. So over the next couple of weeks we are going to be um, learning to write a finding story. So um, this looks like it has five parts, an opening, a build up, a problem, a resolution and an ending. So it's going to look something quite similar to this. Now this is a story mountain. So we start off with our opening here. So we introduce the main character in our opening. Then we have the build up here. The main character uh, goes somewhere. So that's up to you where they go. We have a problem. Um, something goes wrong. They find something and something goes wrong. Okay. Then we have um, the resolution. They put it back and the problem solved. And then the ending is everything ends well and there's a lesson learned. So that's our really basic um, boxing up plan. But we'll revisit that later in the week. That's just for you to know what you're going to be writing. So first of all then, um, we've got a bit of a what we call a stimulus. So this is something that we can start with. And our stimulus is um, a film or a story called Jumanji. Now you may have heard it before. So, in 1981, Chris Van Allsburg wrote a book called Jumanji. In the story, a brother and sister discover a game that turns fiction into real life. Whatever square you land on in the game brings a new challenge to overcome. Worse still, the challenge becomes a reality for everyone around. So, um, in their comments in this video, I'm going to put a link to the trailer for um, the original film in 1995. Okay, so you need to check with your parents and ask them if you can have a look at this video. If you can, pause me now, open the video in a new tab, watch it. While you're watching it, have a discussion maybe with your mum, your dad, your brother, your sister, or write some notes. Okay, thinking about the five stages that we've just talked about, um, what's the problem? Who are the main characters? Um, what do they find? Um, how is it solved? Uh, and what's in the end? See if you can see that from the trailer. Right, pause me now and I'll see you in a minute. So hopefully you've watched the video um, and you enjoyed it. If you haven't, don't worry. I've got a main uh, a model text for you to look at here. So I'm going to read it to you now. Um, just because I like reading to you and it's nice for you to hear my voice still. Um, but I'm also going to post this model text into the blog, your class blog on Purple Mash. So it's there for you to access um, while uh, at your leisure when you want to use it. So it's called The Game. I'm going to be pausing halfway through to ask you some questions. So can you make sure now... Uh, pause me again, make sure now that you've got um, paper and a pen to make some notes on. So most of you should have your worship books from school. Uh, so pause me now and go and get that. So hopefully you've got a pen and paper ready. So I'm going to read this story to you. While I'm reading this story, I want you to be thinking about any words that you don't know okay so do you know like in guided reading we have words that we don't know and we learn them so i want you to make a note of any words you're unsure of okay so either words that you've never heard of or words that you have heard of but you don't know the meaning to okay so it's called the game danny and susie were bored it was wet play again and it felt like they hadn't seen the playground for weeks Rivers of greasy rain streaked the classroom window panes and pulled to make gigantic puzzles in the centre of the netball court. Another lunchtime inside was clearly stressing Mrs Albright as she seemed to be tense and a bit more snappy than usual. She sat at her desk with a steaming cup of tea and marked books with the, fero the ferocity of a wild beast. To top it all, every good game was being used 
and only the tub of dominoes was left. Everyone knew that half of them were going missing and the other half had been chewed by the school reading dog. Danny and Susie searched the classroom for something to do. To their dismay, the comic box was empty. The iPads had been snapped up by Freya and her gang and Billy seemed to have started a resurgence of the game Slap, which didn't look like fun at all. As the two friends squeezed past the art table to set up the wet play box, a tatty cardboard box fell from the top shelf of the bookcase. Susie picked it up. I've never seen this game before, she said, wiping the dust from the unusual lid. It was embossed with intricate patterns and around the edges were pictures of animals, insects and other strange creatures. An animal game? Boring, said Danny, already losing interest. Oh, come on, let's play. There's nothing else to do, suggested Susie, smiling widely and shaking the box. They sat down in a quiet corner, lifted the lid and and looked at the board. So, we've paused there because we're going to think of, of make a prediction. Now, remember, we've looked about predictions in guided reading, haven't we? But a prediction is when we guess what's going to happen next based on things that we've read already. So, we've stopped at an interesting part of the story. What I want you to do now, in your worship books or on your piece of paper, first of all, I'd like you to write a couple of sentences that tell me what do you think is going to happen next so I want you to start with the words I predict and then tell me what do you think is going to happen next now when you wrote this prediction I'd really like you to send a copy to at the year 5 email address or post um, a video on your blog of you reading your prediction Or take a photo of it and put it on your blog or email us your prediction. It would be really nice to see what you think would happen next. So what I want you to do now, pause me, pause this video and write out your prediction. I predict and what do you think is going to happen to um, our main characters with this box. Thinking about the plan that we talked about earlier. Right, off you go. So hopefully you've written your prediction now, so you should have a really nice prediction about what you think will happen next. Now it's really important that you've written your prediction, because we're going to read the rest of the story now, okay? So you can share your prediction with your parents or your um, sisters and brothers and, and see what they think, see how close you are. Right, let's carry on. So remember, they've were looking at the bookcase and then they found a box and it fell down on top of them. So, looks simple enough, said Danny, ever impatient, as he set the counters onto the start line. They were jungle animals, a rhino and a jaguar. He also shuffled the game cards and laid them in a neat pile. Let's just start and learn as we go. Susie went first. She grasped the dice and threw them down onto the centre of the board. An eight! She moved her rhino eight paces to land on an orange coloured square. It showed a picture of a giant tarantula. She lifted a game card and read it out. If you do not catch this beast, then you're on the menu for its next feast. She stared at Danny and shrugged. I don't get it, she said. At that moment, the table began to shake. The windows rattled and the floor vibrated. Everyone stopped what they were doing and the room fell silent. Earthquake! shouted Billy, bursting into laughter. He soon stopped as in a blink of an eye an enormous spider, bigger than a horse, shot out of the game and landed in the centre of the cloudy classroom. Everyone froze. Its enormous hairy legs were tensed, ready to pounce and its whole body seemed to pulse. Eight, bulging, eyes scanned the room and then (gasps) it sprung into action it crushed the tables smashed the windows and flung children all around the classroom with a flick of its legs it powered towards mrs albright and stood rooted to the floor in terror the room was filled with shrieks of panic and despair what shall we do shouted danny desperately pressing himself tightly against the wall 
Read the instructions, ordered Susie. We have to stop it. Quickly, they scrambled around to find the box underneath all the mess. They rescued it from under a pile of math books and scanned the upturned lid to read the instructions. All the while, the spider got closer and closer to their teacher. It stretched out its forelegs, ready to grab her. Her eyes widened in horror as she realised what was coming next. It says we've got to throw two sixes to end the game, screeched Danny, looking pale. Susie grasped the dice again. She threw and she threw and she threw. No luck. She glanced up and saw the spider had her teacher in its grasp. Its its striped legs were holding her in a vice-like grip. She threw again and then again, faster and faster each time. And then just as she was losing all hope, Two sixes! Suddenly, out of nowhere, there was a loud hissing sound. It pierced the air and everyone covered their ears. A flash of light streaked through the classroom and the game rattled into life. It started to suck everything into a vortex in the centre of the room. The mess, the children, the spider, Mrs Albright, there was almighty boom and then nothing. Danny and Susie opened their eyes. Everything was back to normal. Even Mrs Albright was back in her chair, marking with the ferocity of a wild beast. Then the bell went. Pack up, class five, ordered Mrs Albright. Science starts in two minutes and we're looking at animals in their habitats. Susie looked at Danny and raised her eyebrows. They carefully packed the content of the game back into the box. Everything went in, except the dice and the animal counters, which Susie wrapped in a paper towel and placed into the bin instead. They put the lid on the box and lifted it high up into the bookshelf. They never wanted anyone to play that game ever again. Everyone settled down to the afternoon lessons. Everyone, that was, except Billy. He had spotted something on top of the bookshelf that he'd never noticed before, and he intended to investigate it the very next time they were in for wet play. Right, so that was our model text. Remember, I'll post that onto our blog so you can have a look. So what you should have been doing whilst I was reading that was making notes of any words that you did not understand. Okay, so don't worry, it's on the blog, you can go and have another look. So your uh, task for today is to make sure you have a um, prediction written um, from when we stopped the video earlier. And also, I want you to go and find out the meaning of any of the words you didn't understand from the model text. So tomorrow, when we come back, I want to see you with um, uh, your prediction I want you to to have emailed us. And I'd like you to have a list of words that you didn't understand from the text and their meaning, because we're going to be using some of those words to write some really good sentences. Okay? So well done, Year 5. I hope you've worked really hard. I hope you've enjoyed that and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.